Thank you, Sandy. Congratulations to Jeff Southby. And from fullback, we move not too far away to our three final nominations for back pocket. A very difficult position. And the three players are from Melbourne, John Beckwith. From Geelong, Ian Nan Curvis. And from Hawthorne, David Parkin. In the late 50s, John Beckwith teased the vast MCG crowds with his style of back play. There was no out of bounds on the full rule then, and Beckwith had the marvellous ability of being able to kick the ball long and allow it to drift out at the last possible second. John Beckwith had great success as captain of Melbourne. He played 176 games and led the Demons to the Premiership in 1957 and again two years later. When Ian Nankervis took over the back pocket position in the mid-70s for Geelong, he knew just what to expect. Nankervis had joined the Cats in 1967 from local side Barwon and was to quickly establish himself as Billy Goggins' roving sidekick. In the years since he moved to defence, Ian has often managed to accumulate more kicks than his roving opponents. Captain for the last three years, Ian has played 267 games and won his club's best and fairest award a record four times. A bit player in Hawthorne's 1961 Premiership triumph, David Parkin was to play a major part in the club's next three Premierships. He played one game in 1961, but by 1965 was regarded as the safest defender at Glen Ferry and one of the most reliable back pockets in the league. He backed his judgment and played with a tear-through style that endeared him to coach John Kennedy. Parkin played 211 games for the Hawks, captained the side to the 1971 Premiership, and coached it to the 1978 flag. Nominations: well, John Beckwith, Ian Nan Curtis, and David Parkin. And the selection for the back pocket position in our Channel 7 Television Hall of Fame team: John Beckwith. John, firstly, those leg breaks along the boundary, <laughs> how did you do them? Well, they weren't intentional, Sandy. Uh, in those days, uh, Norm Smith's uh, idea was to keep the ball wide from the back line and uh, I just happened to kick it towards the line and I left it to uh, the, the chance of the, where the ball landed, quite frankly. The way you touched that line so often, you were never thought in your early days that you might take up rugby. No, it had been suggested, I think, on a few occasions, but... Uh, not really. Uh, as I said, uh, I didn't really try to kick it out of bounds, but the stories uh, have grown over the years and uh, it's to such a stage where uh, I got a mention there on uh, Friday night uh, by Peter Landy and uh, one of my, my children said, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I thought you kicked the ball in the air, Dad, not along the ground. <laughs> you played in some mighty premiership sides. Was there a lot to do for a back pocket? in those great years? Well, we had, ha, we had a great great sides, uh, but we also had a, a great uh, half-back line. I think this uh, played a big part in my success because uh, they took the steam off the opposition uh, as the ball was coming down and I just picked up the crumbs virtually. So, uh, really, uh, my success, if, if there was any, was due to the, the centre line and the half-back line that uh, did most of the work. I think you're very modest. John Beckworth, back pocket in Sevens Hall of Fame. Well done. <laughs> Good on you, John. Congratulations. I should mention the positions of back pocket and forward pocket Ruckman and Rovers will be filled in after we get to the nominations for the followers. The top selection will go to the first Ruck and Rover and the second choice to the forward or back pockets as the case may be. Let's just check the board just a moment. We have Jeff Southby at full back, John Beckwith in the back pocket. Our next